Aynen sıksın. Parev ses. Arpa imnargi anuno polori separi kalus kumahtem. Welcome everybody. In the name of Arpa Institute, I welcome everybody here for this presentation. As you may know, or if you have not heard about ARPA Institute, we are an organization of experts in various fields, and we try to provide assistance in Armenia. Our main activities are in Armenia. If you want to learn more about our activities, please visit our website, which is www.arpainstitute.org. ORG, and you can read about uh, our activities. The only activity that we have outside of Armenia is these presentations. And the presentations are always related to Armenia or Armenians. We invite experts in various fields to make presentations in any topic related to those above issues. And we are happy today to have Ruben Galchian or Galician, who is actually an electronic engineer, but he is has been involved in cartography for so many years. That is probably uh, over 40 years. He has been active in Armenia in England, as well as in Iran, in various Armenian related activities. He has headed many organizations and helped establish the first uh, consulate in England actually. And he has <laughs> served as honorary counsel for eight years. In 2007, in the memory of his son Levon, he and his wife established an arts and crafts school in the village of Miasnikyan near Armavir. Ruben's first book on historic maps of Armenia, The Cartographic Heritage, was published in 2004. And it was followed by a Russian and Armenian translations in 2005. Since then, he has published over 20 books on cartographic and ethnocultural subjects in Armenian, English, Russian, and Persian. One of which was published in Turkish in Istanbul, and the Persian translation is under print in Tehran. Ruben was awarded an honorary doctorate by the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia in 2008, and he has also received the honorary Moses Horenatsi Presidential Medal for outstanding achievements in the sphere of culture in 2013 for his services to Armenian historical cartography. Ruben, floor is yours. Thank you, Agop. Thanks very much for inviting me to talk to you. And as I'm talking, I'm going to talk about uh, maps of Armenia, maps related to Armenia. Uh, my talk will be an illustrated one, fully illustrated. And uh, I will start with the first world map, which is the, sorry, a map which exists, which is now in the British Museum. It's a small, clay tablet, which has a round cir circle on it, which shows the center of the world. In the center of the world, the German uh, scientists have translated the cuneiform inscriptions. And there are three countries in the center of the world, 600 BC. Uh, one is Babylon, the other is Assyria, and the third one is Armenia. The translation of Armenia uh, is actually written in uh, Babylonian script as Urartu, but the Germans decide that this is uh, Armenia. There are some scientists that still dispute that they, they say Armenia and Urartu are the same, but this second image is going to prove what is written there is correct. 
This is uh, a cuneiform inscri inscription in Behistun near the city of Kermanshah in Iran. It's a huge one, it's about 15 meters, about 10 meters <clears throat> high above uh, the, uh, the surrounding area. So it has stayed there un untouched, uh, already suffered from uh, natural causes, rain, etc. <clears throat> Here, uh, the, the description of Dares, uh, King Dares, D Darius's uh, history refers to his conquests, his uh, behaves, uh, wars with the neighbors, etc. Uh, it's in three languages. It's uh, in uh, Old Persian, Elamite, and Babylonian. Uh, where he, re he refers to one part of it, which is underlined here in shown in red, the names are in red. Uh, it's, it's about Armenia. He says in a neighboring <laughs> Armenia, uh, there, is, uh, th there were riots, etc. And I sent my um, Dadarshi, my Armenian uh, military, uh, military person to the region to see what's happening. Now, in this description, in Old Persian, it says Armenia. In the Elamite, it says Harminuya. And in Babylonian script, it says Urartu, proving that all these three names are the same country of Armenia. Similar to what we have in Germany, the Germans call, it, call themselves Deutschland. We call them Germania, the German, and the other in English is called Germany. And in French, called it Alemania. Yeah. But they refer to the same country. So Urartu and Armenia are the same country. Here we go to Herodotus, the founder of the history, as they say, father of history. It's, this is a map prepared by Conrad Miller according to descriptions of uh, Herodotus. Uh, you see are uh, underlined two countries. One is Armenia in the center. The other is where Parthia, this is Persia, with media together with, formed the Parthian Empire. And so it's 400 and, uh, approximately 450 BC. Herodotus also talks about Armenia. So it continues being there, Armenia. Now, in that particular region, uh, around the beginning of our era, there were many countries. You see different countries here. And in the area which is occupied by Turkey now, the Pen uh, um, Asia Minor, Peninsula of Asia Minor, there are tens of countries. Out of all these countries around here, there are only two that now are surviving. Here, we go back to the uh, Asia Minor, different countries, kingdoms that existed there. There are over 30. Again, all of them have disappeared and only left some stone monuments or whatever. Here's the situation today. Uh, in the center, Armenia, green Islamic Republic of Iran, which both have rough, roughly the same sort of a age. Then on the left, which is Turkey, Turkey appears on maps around the, year, about around the 14th century. In other words, about 2000 years after Armenia. In the north, Georgia. Georgia as Georgia, which is the joint, uh, joint country, countries, which are a country which includes all the other previous countries, Abkhazia, Imeretia, Kakhetia, etc. All these appeared under one rule in 1008 AD. And to the right, we have a Republic of Azerbaijan, which appeared in 1918 only. Let's proceed to come to Tigran the Greats. We get the Armenia from sea to sea. Here, yellow, colored yellow, is the kingdom of Tigran the Great, Great, extending from the Caspian to the Mediterranean. Of course, it didn't last long. 
because the Romans came together, joined forces and pushed him back into the greater Armenia, which is this area, this area here, greater Armenia, this, this is the area. Eventually he had to withdraw to greater Armenia. Now, just after the Grand the Great, this is Strabo's map of the world. Strabo is considered to be the father of uh, geography because his uh, multi-volume geographic work, which is actually called geography, describes all the countries in the world. And in 60 pages, he, de de he dedicates to Armenia, over 60 pages. Armenia, you can see underlined red, sorry. And next, we come to the second century map of map prepared by Ptolemy, who is considered as the father of cartography. His rules and regulations when he wrote during the second century were in use for 16 centuries. He was the most important cartographer in the world. This is the center of the world, center part of the world. On the left, you see the Black Sea. On the right, Caspio Pelagus, this is the sea, uh, Caspian Sea. Armenia Minor and Armenia Mayor, Lesser Armenia, Greater Armenia, are underlined red in the center, south of the Caucasus Mountains. Just near the Caucasus the Mountains, you see Albania. Bear in mind, Albania in Armenian Arvank, in European, European languages today, Caucasian Al uh, Albania. The Arabs and Persians refer to it as Iran. This is the region where today the Republic of Azerbaijan is. And they claim that their ancestors are the Albanians, but we'll come to that later on. This is the second century map and underlined green, you see media. Media is part of the uh, Persian um, uh, Empire, which is called uh, the northern part of it is uh, Lesser Media. Uh, the name used to be Media, but when the Alexander the Great attacked the area and was prevented from conquering by the leader, the local leader called Atropat, the name of the country was changed after his death to Atropaten in, in his honor. The Armenians still Iranian province of Azerbaijan, the Armenians call it Atarpatakan with the old name Atropat. However, the local name, which is the Iranian province of Azerbaijan, has gradually evolved uh, through years and through the invasion of Arabs, changing the Arabs from the, 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 the pronunciations, has evolved Atropaten, Atarpatkan, Adurbatkan, Adarbejan, Adarbejan, Azerbaijan. Now we have Azerbaijan, Persian Azerbaijan in that area, which is underlined red. Uh, here we have a map of the eighth century by a Spanish monk. Those faces you see are the apostles that travel different parts of the world. It's the world is shown as a circle, circle uh, with the east at the top, where in the square that you see is, is, is the paradise earthly paradise with four rivers flowing out of it. And on the right, red on the left, between the Caucasus and Taurus mountains, we see Armenia. And north of Armenia, near the Caucasus mountains, we see again Albania, smaller script. Other countries here, which he can remember the names of, are Assyria, Parthia, etc. But this is eighth century map which again shows Armenia, showing that the this existence of Armenia is continually in present in the map. Here's a 12th century map by French. It's kept in a library of Mejan. Uh, it's a typical, what they call TO map. You see the O is the circle, which is the world. The T you can see inserted in the middle of the world. The left top is Tanais, it says here, it's the river Don, which separates Asia from Europa, Europe. On the right is Nilus, the Nile, which separates Asia from Africa. Below left is Europa, with many countries in it, and cities. 
and below right is Africa, which is unknown, and between all Europe and Africa is the Mediterranean Sea. And again, at the top, you see Paradisus, paradise in the east. In Asia, we see two Armenians here. One is the greater Armenia, which is on the top left, and slightly below it, the other arrow points, it's Armenia Cilicia. It's the Cilician kingdom of Armenia, and this is a French map, and the French had close ties with the Cilician Armenian kingdoms. Therefore, in the French maps, Cilician Armenia is also shown. Of course, in these religious maps, which are called TO maps, center of the world is Jerusalem in the center of the world. Here's its 10th century Persian map, with south at the top. Here again is the world, with the Mediterranean Sea on the right, here, and the Indian Ocean here, Nile, River Nile with its five sources from the mountains of Moon. And then here near the south, the uh, Black Sea, Armenia, Armenia. And south of Iran, Arme, Armenia in Iranian, the Azerbaijan, the province of Azerbaijan of Iran. Here's another Persian map which is typical of a Balkhi school of uh, teaching in Iran. This map is the, uh, shows the area south of the Caucasus. South of the Caucasus, you see that on the green mass on the right is the Caspian Sea. The mount, these mountains are the mountains of Caucasus. This is the Arax River and the Kura River, which flow into the uh, Caspian Sea. In the north of the Karaxis River, we see Albania, which is actually north of the Kura River. And south of it, there's Azerbaijan and Armenia. In all Islamic maps, this area of the world is shown with three countries, Albania, Azerbaijan, Armenia. Now, uh, our neighbors, Azerbaijanis, today they call them, that they sometimes say that we are Albanian, or our heritage is Albanian, Albanian etc. And we are called Azerbaijani. Here we see in the old documents, in all of them, that Albania and Azerbaijan were different regions. Albania, Azerbaijan was inside the territory of Iran, south of Arax River. Albania was another country north of it which became Christian in the, in the middle of the fourth century. Its people became Christian. And in the eighth, ninth century, they accepted Islam. Most of them accepted Islam. And a couple of the uh, groups there stayed Christian. Now, according to uh, uh, Strabo, this area is occupied, Albania, was occupied by 26 different tribes who spoke different languages and even didn't understand each other. Today, the region of Azerbaijan has almost the same number of tribes which have different languages. However, they're not allowed to practice it. They have to speak Turkish. They have to call themselves Azerbaijani, Azeri. We'll come to that, to that later also. Here is a map made by an uh, Italian uh, Venetian monk called Fra Mauro. Here on the right corner top, you see Mediterranean Sea. The Black Sea is below it because the south is on the top here and the Caspian on the left below left. Those regions, those names underlined red say Armenia. Armenia Mayor, Armenia Minor, and the near the Mediterranean, there is a Cilician Armenia. There is no Azerbaijan named here, nothing at all. And Armenia, between these various Armenians, there is a red, which is, has a green pointer on it. 
It says Ark and Noah, Noah's Ark. It's a little building sitting on a mountain. On the left below it is written Ararat. So it's written on, uh, in Mount Ararat. The other uh, arrow here, which is blue, it says Monte Karabakh, mountainous Karabakh. This is the first time in any map, any European map, the name of Ara Karabakh appears. And it is within, you see, different names of Armenia. So it's one of the regions of Armenia. It's considered as one of the Armenian regions. This is 1460, this map. Uh, here we have the first globe, which is made by Beheim. No America, of course, 1492. Uh, the U Europe and China are next to each other in the back of this map, the globe. And in the center, near the, between the black and red uh, Caspian seas, you have Armenia and the Mount Ararat with Noah's Ark sitting on top, it says Arka Noah. During these times, Armenia as an independent country had ceased to exist. However, all maps, all maps made in the West and the East say Armenia on the region between Lake One to, from Lake Lan to Lake Kura, and, and, and River Kura. The reason is that in that area lived Armenians. It continued, the practice continued until 1923, where Atatürk complained that there are no Armenians living in this part, so you should, shouldn't write name Armenia there. Yes, it's true. He had cleansed the region from Armenians in and between 1915 and 23, and therefore the name Armenia since then did not appear in that region. This map is made in 1595, when again, we didn't have a kingdom. However, if you look at the details of the center of the map, the Caspian Sea, Black Sea, here, there are three, four countries only mentioned, Armenia, Syria, Parthia, Egyptus. Anatolia is Anatolia is the re geographical region. There is no country. So even though these times the Armenia was so important for the West, Western cartographers that they show it quite distinctly. Here is another proof of what I said: Armenia Mayor between from Turkey to Persia, so called Armenia Mayor where the countries themselves are named, have names, uh, are named as Persia, Tur Turkia, Iberia, which is Russian, under Russian rule. But since people of Armenian descent lived in the area, the area called is Armenia Mayor. By the way, south of the Arax River here, you can see Aderbigana Sive Atropatena. Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, or Atropaten, Atropatakan, the old name of the region. Map of 1718, showing the region of Caucasus by a German cartographer. Here we have a French map, and this map shows the region. Again, the colored regions are occupied uh, under Persian rule, which changes all the time between Persian and Ottoman, and also later on with the Russian on empires. In the region, but this uh, central region, you see Armenia, Armeni, Armeni, Shirvan, which is the region now occupied by Azerbaijan. The region was called Shirvan, and it was ruled by different Muslim Khans at the time in the middle, in the 17th, 18th centuries. At that time, Armenian Meliks, which is landowners, lived in Karabakh, who were, were independent, semi-independent because the internal rule ruling of their country was left to them. They only had to pay their taxes to the Khans. So this is the 1731, the map. 
sorry. And south of Arax River, Azerbaijan, the Persian province of Azerbaijan. There is no Azerbaijan north of the Arax River, nothing at all. Here we have an Ottoman map, 1803-1804, during that time. You see, land of Anatolia is the Asia Minor, peninsula of Asia Minor, not extending to the Armenian highlands. Armenia, which is east of it, it's in Arab, Arabic script in Turkish, Armenistan, Armenia, and Ajamistan, which is Iran, and Azerbaijan is inside Iran. This area is called Armenia, which includes Erzurum, Trapezon, etc. This is a Turkish map, maybe in, printed in Istanbul in 1803, 1804. There's another Turkish map of the war with Russia. See, Ottoman Empire, large. Anatolia, only part of it. Only this part is Anatolia, which is this peninsula. And Armenia, again. Now, today, after the Ataturk, we started this. This region, our, the need name Anadolia, is extended from here to there. All the Rump, the old Turkey is now called Anadolu or Anatolia. Simple reason to eliminate the name Armenia, Armenian highlands from their territories. Now, uh, Anatolia in Greek means east. When the Byzantine Empire was formed, Istanbul, Constantinople was here. Constantinople looked at east into their territories, their eastern territories, therefore they named this area east. Now when Atatürk, in the beginning, when they started to change the name, to try to eliminate the name Armenia from there, they call this area Anatolia and this region Dogu Anatolu, means east, and in, in other words, Dogu in Turkish means east. Anatolia in Greek means east. So in other words, this region was called east of east. And they saw it is not suitable, therefore they extended the whole name Anatolia over the whole country in order to eliminate name Armenia from there. This is the pure reason for that. Now, in 1915, the, the, the massacres, the first massacre of the Armenian population of the Ottoman Empire happened in 1894-96, where many people left their homelands and traveled to these different destinations from there. This was, of course, followed up by the main genocide later on. Uh, in 1915, the Ottoman, Ottoman began improve, uh, implementing their plan to cleansing Armenians and non-Christians from the region of, our, um, of the Eastern Turkey through genocide, mass deportations, etc. Because Armenia was driving a wedge between their plans, which was the pan-Turkism, pan-Turkistic belt of countries which starts from near Austria, extend all the way eastwards to Central Asia, going to Siberia. Now, there's another story here, these five is Turkic republics, which didn't exist until 1923 to 236. There were no countries there. They were just emirates and khanates, and those emir and khans were appointed by the Russian Tsar and they paid tax to the Tsar. The communists decided to have five new countries there. So they divided the land. You see some places, the lines are very straight. Some places are very intricately mixed with each other. 
Kazakhstan was in 1923 was called Kyrgyzstan and Kyrgyzstan was at the time called Southern Kyrgyzstan. Then in 1933, the Soviet Union decided, no, it's not the correct. Let's call this country Kazakhstan because there's some Kazakh, Kazakh tribes who live there. But this is not related to it. This is new, invent, new countries that invented along with Azerbaijan. Now, Armenia, see in red here, it's stopping them from me making this belt. So Armenians had to go. They had to vanish from the earth, which the Turkish Empire, Ottoman Empire tried to do. And now the Turkish, Mr. Erdogan and Azerbaijan are trying to complete it, sort of. It was half done. After the World War, the Russian Empire disappeared and Armenia and Georgia declared their first independent republics. This is the uh, second genocide, I'm sorry, forgot to mention it, that when it happened, these are centers of the massacres and deportations during the, sec second, the Armenian genocide, which was the plan to cleanse the area. Now we come to the beginning of the, our republic, uh, the two countries, which was the G Georgia and Armenia, refer to their old names. But the third country decided that there was, was planned to call it the Southeastern Caucasian Republic. But Ataturk and Rasul Zadeh, an extreme, uh, extreme nationalist in Azerbaijan, decided to call it Azerbaijan borrowing its name from the neighboring Iranian province. When uh, Professor Barthold, the Russian uh, uh, Orientalist, Russian Orientalist, was teaching in Baku, one of the students asked, why is the, our name is the same as our neighbors? He says, uh, it's name, your name is later add to the, the, uh, given to your country so that you can later on try to get the ownership of the rest, the other Azerbaijan, the main Azerbaijan, which they did try a few times. But when the communists occupied the region in 1920, this, is, this was the whole of, all of this area was Armenia. Then the Soviets, particularly Lenin, decided to have a good relation with Ataturk and the green up the bordered area of Kars and Ardahan and the Mount Ararat, he donated, it gave way to Turkey so that Turkey will, can join the communist camp, which Turks didn't and went to join the opposition camps. And uh, in 1920, when originally it was the countries where it became the, uh, communist, there was a decision by the Azeri, Azerbaijani parliament that the regions of Nagorno-Karabakh, here are the region, the announcements that they made. In 9, November 1930, Armenia became communist on the 29th. On the 30th, Azerbaijan announced that the uh, workers, so you can read this, that the workers of our, our party have decided to welcome the Armenians to our camp, and the, we have decided that Nakhichevan and Karabakh should belong to Armenia, should be inside the region, territory of Armenia. It was printed in Baku and, and Moscow, in the newspapers, and then the same was repeated in Yerevan in 1921, in June of 1921, another announcement which was in the papers. And here comes Mr. Stalin, to, uh, to a month after this uh, declarations, second declaration. And in a closed meeting with Narimanov, they decide, no, the region should go back to Azadun, to should belong to Azerbaijan. And it, 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 Stalin gives the regions to Azerbaijan. And hence the problem that we have today. Now, we have a, country here, which has been 
recently established, recently born. And the Soviet Union tells its uh, constituent republics that each of you should have your own culture and your own history. What can you do about this? There's nothing that can be done. I'll come to this later on, how to find a means of ownership, finding a history. Of now, after all this, we're left with this, uh, this Armenia. In 1928, this was Armenia that we inherited from Soviet Union. Look at this area, this region, it's straight line coming down. Within the next 10 years, certain regions of Armenia, here outlined in blue, were given away to Azerbaijan. Also parts from mountainous Karabakh as well. As well. There were good pastures. Here there are three lakes, small lakes there. They were good for Azeri pastures. Therefore, they moved in. And once they moved in, the Soviet government built schools for them. And gradually, they took over the land. And the land was transferred to them between these ten, during these 10 years. Now, as I said, how to make individual history and culture for a new world country. It's to make sure that these indigenous people are not there anymore. They're proven no newcomers. But Azerbaijan is constantly doing that, saying the Armenians arrived in the South Caucasus in 1828. Before that, there were no Armenians. All the local culture, etc., is Azeri, of course. All the historic monuments are there Azerbaijani, of course. How could it be otherwise? They were built by our ancestors, the Albanians who were Christians. They forget to mention that the uh, Albanians accept Islam in 10th, 11th century. And most of these churches were built during the 11th to 13th, 14th centuries. How could a converted Muslim build churches in the area? And if they cannot uh, um, clear and declare ownership of the uh, monument, destroy it. Like they destroyed the uh, Armenian tombstones in cemetery of Julfa, Julfa. North of the river Arax in Julfa, there were 5,000 medieval Armenian tombstones were simply broken down and used as a construction material. Now, here, what example of how they do it? They have print, uh, published a book called The Monuments of Western Azerbaijan. The book cover has the map of Armenia on it. It says Western Azerbaijan, now uh, populated by Armenians. And all our monuments, all, I mean, I, all our monuments are either Turkish Christian or Turkish Albanian monuments. Here is Horvirab. Underneath, you can see view of the Turkish temple Horvirab. Uh, this is how to establish this them as an old country, Albania. However, when they want to have to have good relations with Turkey, they say, we are the same race divided into the two countries, same people divided into countries. And the color of our flag, the blue one means that we are Turks. The green one means we are Turk, uh, is Muslim. And the red one shows that we are modern and democratic. This is the color. These are the description of the color of their flags. This book contains over 100, 120 photos of Armenian monuments, all very similar type titles. This is the region as it was. Now, uh, in, until now, the name of the country was given as uh, Azerbaijan in 1918, but the people living there, all the people for about until about 1936, called themselves Turks or Kurds or Talishes, whatever they were. In 1936, the Supreme Soviet 
made a decision during the, the central meeting that the people of this country should call themselves Azerbaijani, Azeri. And one night over, you slept as a Turk and you woke up as an Azeri. Everybody in the country is Azeri. This is a uh, lesson learned from Ataturk, who says, whoever lives in Turkey is Turk. Turkey is for Turks only. The population of the present day Azerbaijan Republic consists of Turks, Kurds, members of 26 Albanian tribes, as they called it, Iranian Talashis, Lesgins, Sahurs, Avars, Udis, etc. Instead of being proud of their mixed heritage, like Americans are, they say that no, there's no Udi or no, 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 no different race, everything, everybody is Turk. There's a one Turkish culture, one Turkish heritage. In 1921, 20, from, uh, 21 to 1990, the population of Garabakh, who was populated by about 85% Armenia, was repressed by the central Azeri government through closing of Armenian university, radio programs, delaying even preventing economic growth. And during the World War II, one out of 19 Azeris went to war, while one out of three Armenians in Azerbaijan were sent to the war. This is a method of cleansing the region from Armenia. Now, the present dilemma. During the last months of the USSR, sorry, in the last month of the Armenian Armenians of Karabakh, fully in compliance with the ruling regulations, organized a referendum and declared independence from the USSR. This is according to the USSR constitution that regions, autonomous regions, autonomous republics are allowed to do that. They did it. However, Azeri sent uh, Azerbaijani Soviet, uh, Soviet Azerbaijan, which itself was already declared independence. We didn't accept the declared, uh, declared independence of the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and the 1991-94 war started that. The Azeris attacked, bombarded the Stepanakert and you're most probably familiar with that 1991-94 war. Uh, but the, eventually the Armenian forces, although small, they uh, became victorious, as well as liberating most of Artsakh. The Armenian forces occupied the security belt of buffer zone around them in order to prevent the possible Azeri shootings and shellings of Artsakh border towns and villages. Eventually, a Russian uh, arranged ceasefire was organized, and the OSC group, Minsk group, was set up to negotiation for peace. During the 25 years of negotiations to find a solution, Aliyev's regime always insisted that, as a precondition, all the lands, including Karabakh and Artsakh, should be returned to their original owners, the Azeris. Now, Azeris have been there since 1936, and Azerbaijan has been there since 1918. How can they do that this is our original lands? I don't know. This is still what they say, as Liev says, our ancestral lands. His ancestors are mostly from Central Asia, have nothing to do with these people who lived there for, in Karabakh for 2,000 years. Uh, during the ensuing 20 years, negotiation did, didn't get anywhere. And in 2016, they attacked Armenia, trying to sort of a, get some sort of a solution to this problem. They were beaten back and they lost territories at that time and some gained some, gained some lost some territories. And again, they tried it last June without success. And now enter Big Brother, Turkey, who seems to have assured Azerbaijanis that they will arrange a blitzkrieg, short war, and occupy Artsakh within two or three days. In July, under the pretext of the joint military maneuvers, they brought heavy artillery, 
tanks and military experts, as well as six NATO F-16 fighter jets and pilots to Baku, who stayed there and never left after the uh, maneuvers and were used fully during the September 27 war, surprise war. Baku also sent thousands of Syrian ISIL mercenaries to the region because Azeri soldiers had proven that they cannot fight the Armenians. The Blix Street did not work. And according to their previous practices, instead, the Azeri Turks started, the Turkish artillery started bombarding the cities. The infrastructures were destroyed. Israeli cluster bombs and Turkish rockets were used, causing much civilian dam destruction and damage. Even uh, F-16 fighters from inside Azerbaijan territory shot an Armenian uh, jet, which was inside 60 kilometers inside the Armenian airspace. And they targeted the civilian areas, particularly reporters who were visiting the towns and the French, uh, Russian, and British journalists were injured during these attacks. Uh, Armenians have not the, forgotten the pogroms of the Sumgait, the industrial city near Baku, where Armenian civilians were killed by Azeri mobs in their homes, and no one was punished, as well as beheading was at the end of the Armenian officers in Budapest. This is a couple of gruesome photos from Sumgait, which I will not keep long on screen. But anyway, after the war, this was the region that Armenia and Artsakh occupied. Now, Armenia, with this war, it is proven that the Azeris want the land of Armenia, Karabakh but they don't want Armenian people there. If their occupy ever occupy Artsakh, the people of Armenian people of Artsakh will already be deported or cleansed in whatever means. Here, in the early war in 2016, what happened to a family who lived on the outskirts of the village of Talish. The first Azeri soldiers that they came, killed these two elderly people, cut their ears and took their ears as trophy. In Budapest, we haven't forgotten that in Budapest, uh, during a military conference in a dormitory, an Azeri officer named Ramil Safarov beheaded the sleeping Armenian officer, Gurgen Markarian, and after a few years of serving the sentence in Hungary, in 2012, he was transferred to Baku to serve the remainder of his um, sentence there. However, in Baku, he was welcomed as a hero, was given uh, an increase in rank, military rank, given a car, an apartment, and he became a sample how the Turkish Azerbaijanis should be. In October 11th, the Azeri forces penetrated last October, a few weeks ago, penetrated the Armenian town of Hazrut, and the outskirts of the town killed an elderly woman and his disabled son. This is their signature. Another signature is this. If you're not accept, uh, successful militarily, do this, kill the people. This is what happened in Stepan Agirt. Now, the actions make the genocidal intentions of these Azeris and mercenary forces very clear, which is the continuation of the Turkish genocide perpetrated by the Turks in 1915 and 23. Bombings of the villages of infrastructure targets show that they intend to get rid of the population and take the land without the army. Azeris are fighting for the land, while the Armenians are fighting for their homeland and life. 
this tiny country is not only fighting the Azerbaijani forces, controlled and led by the Turkish military, but Turkey itself, as well as Turkish recruited international terrorists and Islamic fundamentalists, supplied with weaponry from Israel, US, while the world is just looking in my personal opinion, the involvement of Turkey and the supply of the most modern drones, use of cluster bombs supplied by Israel, and the use of, especially use of the NATO F-16s, could not have happened without the tacit approval of the United States. Finally, let us also not forget that Turkey already has presence in Azerbaijan, as it's controlling their military power with Aliyev only as a tool in their hands. <clears throat> they are not going away. Their overall goal is to complete the genocidal program while instead extending their power and control over the Azeri oil and gas fields, hence the energy transport pipelines, thus taking control of the huge chunk of oil and gas that Europe needs. If this is realized, Turkey can dictate the needs, his needs, and, the ter and his terms to Europe and will be the overall winner. Thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> Thank you, Ruben. Very interesting presentation. Now, uh, if there are any questions, you can uh, write it down in the chat room and uh, we will ask Rupen to uh, respond. Rupen, have you studied or have you uh, researched on, um, you said a few things about Urardu and Armenia. Yeah. But have you actually seen any recent studies comparing the Urardu and Armenia or I mean, they, I've, seen, I've yeah. seen some, but I, I won't say that I've gone delved into depth into it because uh, my subject is cartography, cartology, yeah. and this particularly the ancient history uh, is an uh, interesting thing. Uh, one of the American historians said history is like a housewife going to a market, buying a fish and bringing <laughs> it, cooking the way she wants. Yeah, <laughs> this is what he said history is old history is because uh, if nothing written exists, then you can make anything you want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was Ataturk who said it's history, making history is not important, is writing history is important. In other words, what happens is not important, the way you present it, that's the way it's in which is important. Yeah, there's a question from Aslan Aslanian. It says, what does Al Albania have to do with that part of the world? Uh, and he has a second question. He says, EU and the UN and the rest of the world legally accept Karapag as Azeri theory, it's, uh, territory. Why? Regarding the first question, Caucasian Albania has been there since the before our era, Strabo during the first century AD has written about all Caucasian Albania. It has nothing to do with the European Albania at all. It's like Iberia. Iberia is the, in the peninsula of Portugal in Spain. But Iberia also called the name of old, part of old uh, Georgian kingdom, Iberian kingdom. Uh, the second question was, as I mentioned, people of Karabakh, according to the rules of the Soviet Union, inside the Soviet Union in 1989 and 1991, twice when I organized referendum, and declared cessation from the United of USSR. And this never has been discussed in the UN. And because Azerbaijan didn't agree with, accept it, and even the Soviet central government said that you, uh, you cannot refuse accepting it, 
but Azerbaijan, when they registered, they went and presented themselves, including their presented Mount, mountains, Karabakh, and Nahijewan inside their territories. This is how the West closed their eyes, like what they did originally during the first naming of Azerbaijan. There were a few letters written protests that this new country cannot be called. Iranian wrote that, uh, complained that a new country cannot use the name of our province. But European powers were busy doing different things. At that time, in 1918, they were dividing the oil in the Middle East. So nobody paid any attention to this. And this one has been has escaped attention, I think. And therefore, according to the Soviet rules and regulations, mountainous Karabakh is independent state, independent republic. Armin Gergelian has a question. He says, are the Azeris in Iran and the Azerbaijanis the same people? You mentioned they came from Central Asia. Is it possible that these people are indigenous Iranians who took the Turkish language? Uh, Azeri Turks in Iran, Azeri, Azeri Turk in the Republic of Azerbaijan doesn't exist. The population there are Turks, Kurds, Talishis, and different uh, groups, as I mentioned. However, the Azeris are the people of Azerbaijan, Iranian province of Azerbaijan, who are Indo-European race. They spoke a Persian language until the 15th, 16th century. And when this region was overrun by the Turkish speaking speakers uh, from the Central Asia, gradually over a century, their spoken language changed to the ruling classes language. A few villages in Iranian province of Azerbaijan still use the old language, which is similar to Talishi language. Therefore, uh, even according, they're not the same race, the Iranian. However, because they use the same language, it's a very easily the local people are convinced that we are the same people because we use the same language. But the same token, they, they say that we are the same people as the population of Turkey. However, the Tehran University about 12 years ago did a um, genetic research and from the DNA researches, they declared from the, what they found, they declared that only 8% of the male population of Iranian Azerbaijans have Turkish genes. Hmm. Only 8% have Turkish genes. They're not Turkish, they're Persians. An Iranian uh, uh, linguist, Kastravi, uh, in his, one of his works, he's right, when he writes about the Turkish language being uh, Azeri language changing into Turkish in the Iranian province of Azerbaijan, says the, the language, the locals changed the language to Turkish because they didn't have a written language. The Azeri language wasn't a written language. It was a dialect of the old Pahlavi Persian, but a dialect only and not written. However, he says, in the same region, they lived Armenians who, because had a written language, written language, written script, they did not change the language. They kept their own language. So uh, I would say the Northern Azerbaijan, Republic of Azerbaijan, the population is a mix of very, very different races. And genetic research there is forbidden. The Azeri government will not allow anybody to do any genetic research in their country. Because uh, they know that their results will not be to their benefit. Yeah. There will be different types of genes there, different peoples, different races. Kamil Turian asks, should Armenia recruit Azeri Kurds as the war continues? <laughs> Azeri Kurds? No, but Armenian Kurds, the Armenia has a Kurdish population of 30,000. Their sons are fighting in the Armenian army. 
and they're proud of the, of that because they have made the Armenia their home and they said we're fine we're happy to send our children to fight for Armenia and they changed their names uh, surnames is what well, we end with Jan but on, you can only tell from the first name that these are not Armenia they're Kurds yes they are yeah. Yazidi Kurds who are slightly different from the others and actually were killed by ISIL forces in thousands during the last few years. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I meant, I meant Yezidi Kurds, not Azeri Kurds. Yeah. Yezidi Kurds are fighting for Armenia, outside yeah. of Armenia. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. Kunel has a second question. He says, with Trump trying to destroy Iran, how do we expect any help from the US with Armenia staying uh, in, in the good terms with, uh, with Iran? Well, Armenia has been in good terms with Iran over centuries. Uh, and they've been our lifeline towards the South, a Northern lifeline to, through Georgia has sometimes been sort of a precarious. And uh, we intend to keep good relations with Iran. And Trump even want, wants to destroy Iran. I think it's not, I don't think it's easy to destroy Iran. It's not easy to destroy a 2,500, 3,000 year old civilization. Uh, certain groups in Iran, yes, would like that. But the country as a whole is a unified country. I don't think Mr. Trump will accept, um, will, will, be able, will be able to do that will succeed. However, he will try and he's trying. And... I, have an, I have an answer. May Trump perish. I'm sorry. <laughs> I agree with you. Mohamed Mugarchan says, how many Armenians, Armenians are there in Turkey? In Turkey, uh, there are about 60,000 in, in and re, uh, around uh, Istanbul. But there are over one or two million Muslim or the Armenians who have converted and have forcefully been converted into Islam and they're coming out now and saying that we are Armenian. Some of them have go to Istanbul and get baptized. But 60,000 Armenians in Istanbul, I don't know why they've stayed there. No, that's all. You're right. Mm -hmm. Aslan Aslanian has said, so what is the percentage of change in, in case the Persian Turks, the Fars in Iran, that amounts to over 60% of the population in Iran. Uh, the, the Turks, Iranian Turks are about 20, 24, 5% of the population. And majority of them are pro-Iranian. In other words, if they want to, you want to stay in Iran or separate, they will say we'd like to stay in Iran majority of them. However, Israeli and American propaganda, including Azerbaijani propaganda, very strong. They have TV station, which is named Southern Azerbaijan, which is Iranian province. They call it Southern Azerbaijan. They said it has to join to the North, which, are our, which is ourselves. And uh, these are very strong propaganda there going on. But any Iranian Turk, who goes to Azerbaijan, I've met a number of these, these, will not try to go there back again. He says, these Azeris of Azer Republic of Azerbaijan treat us, the original Azeris, as second class citizens. We don't want them. So I've heard this from many Azerbaijanis when I was traveling in Az Iranian Azerbaijan. Uh, took some friends for a tour there. And uh, we were speaking, speaking to everybody. When they knew that we Armenians were happy, this drive attack, this bus driver insisted that we go to his home for a dinner one night. <laughs> That's great. And when I was, uh, I started speaking Turkish with him, he started crying. So why are you crying? He says, you've left this country 60 years ago and now you still, still speak my language. I'm so glad that you're back here. <laughs> that is wonderful. 
one one example, another example I give you. I took 32 Armenian intellectuals to for Iranian tour of Iranian Azerbaijan. Uh, on a Friday lunchtime, we arrived in Saint Stephanus near the Lake Arax, Arax River, which is one of the our important religious centers used to be. And we saw hundreds of private cars parked. I asked one of them, what is this? You have come to the church? He said, no, there's a big park. The government made, uh, organized a huge park there because there's a large uh, spring of fresh water spring there. People come for a picnic. We approached them and I saw a huge queue of about 200 people trying to enter the church complex, which is next to it. Now I went back to the ticket sellers. I said, look, uh, I've got 30 guests from Armenia. We don't have time. Can you give us tickets and lead us to the beginning of the, the, the uh, beginning of the line? Because we can't wait for hours here. He looked at me and said, you are Armenian, you own, this is your uh, heritage. You don't need tickets. So he took us all, 32 of us, from the back door into the church. He said, here, go there and visit your own church. Mm. And we noted that all Muslim women coming into the uh, church kept themselves very, very quiet and polite and uh, that stayed there did whatever they did, whatever pray, they prayed and then went out. Uh, Armenians are in Iran are known as honest and good people. Whoever they want, to, whoever they want to work to be done properly, said, take it to an Armenian master. True, very true. So this cannot be changed. This is there. <laughs> yeah. Very true. So, so I guess. Um... Kaled, you want to ask your last question? Is Israel building a base in Azerbaijan to attack Iran? Yeah, there is rumors that one of the, see Israel, it's Iran is too far from Israel for rockets to get there effectively. And they are establishing a base in Southern, on the border of Azerbaijan and Iran, they say, for a quick attack in case they have to do that. Is this correct? Well, uh there are rumors. Uh, there are rumors. I, I know that in Israel has intentions. That his relations, good relations with Azerbaijan, is purely for that reason. He, we know that they have the reconnaissance aircraft in there, and a couple of their drones came over to Iran, and Iran shot them down. And yesterday, one of the drones was using was a military drone. The Iranians shot it down and started bombarding the area north of the uh, river, river. I don't know what, what, for what reason was the trend there, but mm. uh, there, if what is, and Israel is trying to do this sort of thing is a well-known fact. Mm. Uh, there's no proof of the having there any, any bases there, but they might have problem, they might probably have specialists, troops, etc. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Professor, Professor Levon Marashlian makes a comment. He says, Rupen's presentation is outstanding. We are fortunate to have his cutting edge, state of the art, geographical, historical evidence sharing with us. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, you can uh, see, get my books from my Bay, um, web website and uh, those books you can free your free download on the website because the image quality will not be the same but they are the, the text is the same and thank I, you for your attention thank you bravo thank you bravo, bravo. very much i i have your book already bravo mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> thanks very thank much you. thank you very much ruben thank you ruben yeah, I, ruben, I have your that... books too yeah thank you those are the only questions there are. And still, Vakarayan also says outstanding scholarly presentation and very timely thank topic. You. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Rupen. Uh, excellent presentation. These are all the questions that they had. Can and we I get the website? For, you, for your participation. So uh, please go to the website of the ARPA Institute and donate so we can do more 
to help Armenia. Thank you well, all. At the moment, our efforts are the war. And my wife has spent about $6,000 just, just two days. Yes, <laughs> two we're days. all working towards that. We're all doing that, yes. Well, keep healthy. And let's see. We all, we all need to pitch in. Please donate to the Armenia Fund. Yes, we, we're doing yes. it all the time. Yeah. Be healthy. Thank you. Thank Keep you. well. Thanks. Thank you.